Hey there, I'm John Siskovich, and every day for the next eight weeks, I'm gonna show you what it's like to raise a full production batch of broilers uh, on my farm. Not only that, I'm gonna raise a full batch of 240 birds. That's my typical rotation. I do multiple rotations throughout the year. But I'm gonna also show you how to raise one of these chicken tractors out in your front yard. I'm gonna set aside one of these chicken tractors, raise it in my front, front yard, and show you the difference between a full production batch and a small scale batch that you can do at home. I've written a book on how to design these chicken tractors. These chicken tractors have been supporting my business and been a main part of my pastured poultry operation here in Western Connecticut. But also you can, in, you can have it in your backyard. It doesn't take a lot of space. You can have all of your chicken through the year. You can raise a few extras and sell them to friends, family, and whatever uh, to make a few extra bucks and cover your own costs. But whether you want to do it at a larger scale or a very small scale for your homestead, this series is for you. It comes out once a week. Let's get in to day one. At the post office, just picked up my baby chicks. There they are sitting in the back. They're cheaping. They're happy. They're wonderful. Time to get them home. Time to get them in the brooder. Let's do this thing. Just got the last batch in, counted out the chicks, gave them all a drink of water, they're settling in, having a good time. So it's day one having the chicks. They're a little scared of my voice, they're skittish. They're brand new baby chicks, super cute. One of the most important things to do on day one and two and three, and uh, you know, just going forward until they really establish themselves, is to come back hourly, twice an hour, you know, every two hours, whatever. Uh, as often as it's convenient for you to see, is it too hot in here? Is it too cold in here? Are they getting enough water? Did they run out of feed? Just check up on them. They're babies. They're only a day old. They don't really know what's going on. They went through a big change. If you got them overnighted, they just spent the night on a truck, which is, you know, not great if you're a baby chick. So just checking in on them, making sure they have feed and water, they're comfortable. And um, yeah, overall, just want to make sure they're happy babies. Day one, you're going to have a little puff ball. They fit inside your hand. They have no feathers in their little wings here. And yeah, maybe the first showings of their primary flight feathers, but all in all, just a cute, fuzzy baby chick. You want to keep them warm, you want to keep them fed, you want to keep them in water, you want to keep the predators out. But other than that, just let them be cute and take lots of pictures. Really, a day two is all about monitoring, monitoring the temperature of the brooder and seeing you know, if the birds were happy, did they have enough feed, did they have enough water, uh, they definitely had enough space. And then throughout the day, as it was sunny and then it was a little overcast, then we had kind of like mixed clouds today, uh, and then we had a little bit wind and now it's really still, that temperature changes because this is an uninsulated shed. So depending on if the sun was shining and it got really warm outside, I would go check on the chicks and maybe open up a window. If the sun went behind a cloud or it got windy and cool in the evening, then I would close things down or turn another light on to adjust what the temperature is, to make sure that those birds are happy and healthy in there. So that's day two. Day three with the baby chicks, it's Friday. They're in here, they're doing really well. I have them in a tighter area because they're young and they're dumb and they get stuck if they get too far away from the heat lamps. It's warm in here, they're doing really well. Uh, they're sizing up fine for the first couple days. So either today or tomorrow, I'm going to take out my little divider and give them the whole entire area to kind of roam around and scope out. I'm going to give them one more day, I think, uh, and have them in this tighter area. But after the first, you know, two, three days, you can expand their area, give them a little bit more space if you have that infrastructure, um, and they'll do really well. But that's uh, day three here on the farm. So it's Saturday, and you'll see old area, new area. I've expanded their area inside the brooder because now they're a little bit more adapted 
to being alive, you know? And uh, last night when I went out, there were birds tucked away in corners where they weren't with other birds. And if it gets really cold at night, they might get a chill. So I keep them tight in the beginning so that they stay together, they stay warm, and they survive. And then when they get a little bit older, I can trust them with a bigger area, they'll come back in, and they'll stay alive still. So I'll check on them tonight and make sure that there's no random birds out in a corner by themselves. But in general, now they have a bigger area, they have more space, more space to thrive. I keep their feed full, I keep the water full. Life is good. So uh, today I added extra feeders and waters in. Remember, there's like 270 birds in here. So they take up a lot of space, they eat a lot of feed, they drink a lot of water. It's really hot outside. You can see I have a, a window open over in the corner there. Uh, I have the other window open behind me, which is bringing in some of this light on my shiny, sweaty face. And um, trying to make the birds as comfortable as possible. As you're managing brooder temperature in the summer, remember that not only is it you know maybe 84 degrees outside and that's close to what the temperature that these birds want as you decrease one to two degrees a day um, it's not only that temperature outside in the ambient but they're enclosed in maybe a building depending on the way you're doing it i have it in a shed and the sun beats down on that shed so it has the potential to get warmer in that shed than it is outside so airflow and circulation is a really big thing then access to feed and water as these birds get bigger they want more feed, more water, they're pooping more. You're gonna check on their shavings, uh, depending on what your system is, and make sure that birds are happy and healthy. Always check food, water, and how clean and dry are their shavings. If their shavings are moist and covered in poop and emitting ammonia, it's not a good thing. So, birds look happy, birds look healthy, on to tomorrow. Today, the weather's been great. Uh, really warm, a little breezy, and with it being so warm and the sun hitting the shed, I have this window here on the bottom. Now, I brood a lot of birds, and I have a shed specifically designated for brooding, and it has openings like this so I can control the airflow. As the birds get warm during the day, as the sun is out and the sun is beating on uh, the brooder here, I have the window open so that they can get airflow directly where they are. Now, as they're pooping, and that poop emits, you know, its poop flavor out in the air, a little bit of ammonia, um, hopefully a lot of that gets absorbed by the wood chips, but part of the wood chip is drying out and getting rid of that ammonia and the natural stuff that's in their poop that they just, you know, shouldn't be around that much, is increasing the airflow and seeing, you know, how, how well they're doing. So, I have this door on the outside. Had it open today, I'll have it open in the future. The birds are warm enough, it's August right now. Um, there's a whole bunch of birds in there. There's a homestead batch in there, and then there's a production batch in there. Uh, they're gonna get separated when they go out into the field. Pretty excited for it. Aren't they cute? They're super cute. So that's it for, for week one. I hope you've enjoyed the week so far. It's gonna come out weekly for the next eight weeks. I'm gonna show you every day of what it's like to have broilers out in the farm. Honestly, it's gonna be great. I'll take you guys through step by step. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below. I'm open to questions as this is a series and it's going forward. I'm going to answer those questions as we go. Let me know. Talk to you guys soon. Enjoy whatever you're doing. And until next time, I will see you out in the field. Mm -hmm.